Today's lesson is about drawing stem and leaf diagrams. Can you get the title, grade and date into your book? A stem and leaf diagram is a way of showing information. Here we've got three examples that we're going to work through. In order to draw a stem and leaf, we need to work out two separate parts, namely the stem and the leaf. We start with a stem. In order to work out what we do, we need to work out first off what the largest and smallest number that we are representing is. In this case, the smallest number is 35. The largest number is 52. So the first step we do is we write down the stems. So that is the first part of each of the numbers. So because the numbers here range from their 30s up to the 50s, we've put 3, 4 and 5. We then make sure we use a ruler and we draw a little line. In order to then start filling in the stem and leaf diagram, we take one number at a time and put it onto the diagram. The first number is 45. That is in the 40s row. So on the 40s row, because I've already got the 4 there, I then put a 5. 48 is my next number. That also goes on the 40s row. So I make sure I leave a little bit of space and put the 8 to represent 48. 43 is the next number. Again, that's on the 40s row. So again, leaving a little bit of space, we put the number 3 just there. 35 is my next number. So that's on the 30s row. So a little 5 just there. And then 38. So again, a little 8 just there. 50 is my next number. Now that goes on the 5 row. The leaf, which is these numbers, here is 0. I must still put down the number 0 because otherwise I do not know from the diagram that the number 50 actually existed. 52 is my next one. So again, leave a little space. and Put the number 2 to stand for 50. 2. And 43 is my next one. Even though I've already got a 43, I need to show that there are two in the list. So again, small space and the number 3 there. As a mathematician, there's something that I don't like about this diagram. And it's the fact that each row is not in order. This is known as an unordered stem and leaf. I'm going to repeat this process now, but putting each row in order. So I'll do 3, 4 and 5 again. You can either do this just to the side or just below, wherever you've got some space. Take your ruler, trying to keep everything neat as we possibly can. Draw a little line going next to it. And then we put all of the leaves in order in each row. The top row is actually already in order, so it's 5 and 8. This row, however, becomes 3, 3 five and eight so putting these numbers into order and actually the bottom row is already in order so I could put zero and two this is known as an ordered stem and leaf the final thing I need to do is just actually write down a key something that allows other people that are looking at this diagram to know what each of these numbers means you know to do that let's just write down the word key we only need to pick one number and just demonstrate what that means. So on the diagram, if I were to write 3 with the line then 5, that represents or equals the number 35. So here is my key. The reason why the key is really important can be demonstrated with the next two examples. Here's example 2. I'll just give you a couple of seconds to copy the numbers in so that you can copy the diagram when I'm talking through it. Here, we've got numbers in the 180s, 170s and 160s. So our stem takes up the 100s and the 10s column, because the leaves must be single digits every single time. So this time, I will have the numbers 16, 17, and 18. 
These represent 160s, 170s and 180s. That little ruled line just there. So we've got 185 first, so that goes on this bottom row. We simply put this unit on the end, that's the leaf. We've then got 179, so 9 onto that row. 164. 171, so going back onto the middle row. Put a 1 just there, make sure you leave a little gap so you don't start getting the numbers mixed up. 169 goes on the top row. 183. Then we've got 181, again on the bottom row. And 170. Just remember, zero is still relevant because I need to make sure that I've shown that 170 actually exists. This will get me one mark on an exam, but there are two more marks available. That is for then ordering the stem and leaf. So again, I put the exact same numbers in the stem, so 16, 17 and 18. I then put each row in order, smallest to biggest. So for the top line, I get 4 and 9. 9, 1, 0, put in order, smallest to biggest, becomes 0, 1, 9. And for the bottom row, this will become 1, 3, 5. The third and final mark is for the key. The key in this instance, again, will look slightly different because the numbers themselves on the table, the diagram, look slightly different. You can pick any number you want. It doesn't even have to appear on the table, though it normally is easy if you pick something that's on there. So I'm going to go for if I've had 181, so in other words, 1, 8, the line and 1, that would equal the number 181. You are basically telling somebody who has not drawn the diagram, they're just looking at your work, what it means. The third and final example that we're going to look at is this one here. This time, we have got numbers that start with 8, 7 and 6. So we are actually going to have our stem. I normally put, try and put this in order, if you can, as 6, 7 and 8. This time, I'm actually going to quickly draw the key first. Because on this one, I'm going to say that 8 line, and then any number, doesn't even have to appear on the diagram, 3, would represent the number 8.3. This will just make sure I remember what I'm putting on as my leaf. So for 8.4, we put a 4 on the 8 row. 7.8, we'd have an 8 there. 6.3. For 7, there is no number after the decimal point. In other words, it is zero after the decimal point. So I will still need to put a zero on the seven row, because otherwise it is not clear that the number seven exists in the list on my table. We've then got 7.1, 7.5, 8.1, and 6.4. This has got me two marks so far. My third and final mark will simply be for putting on an ordered stem and leaf. So we're going to have again 6, 7 and 8. And then I put each row in order. The first one is already correct, so we can put 3 and 4 again. The next one down in order from smallest to biggest will become 0, 1, 5 and 8. And the bottom row would become 1 and then 4. This is a three mark question and appears all the way through and on the GCSE paper. You can now attempt the questions on the worksheet drawing a stem and leaf.